We learn from the opening words of the Gospel of Luke and of the Book of Acts that Luke has given a very careful account of things relating to the ministry of the Lord Jesus and the continuation of that ministry in the Book of Acts through the Holy Spirit as the Gospel is spread around the world. The story is an absolutely remarkable story and Luke has been careful to interview the key people and to bring us a very accurate account, some of the things he personally witnessed himself. And he was involved in these things from the beginning. So while many people wrote accounts of the Lord Jesus, his, along with Matthew and Mark, have stood the test of time, as many people were familiar with the events, and their testimony has guaranteed the accuracy of what Luke has recorded for us. So the book of Acts begins, The former account I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began, both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also presented himself alive after his suffering by many infallible proofs, being seen by them during forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It's not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share these verses together. So Jesus met with his disciples in various circumstances over a period of time explaining to them the connection between his ministry and what had been written in the Old Testament, the promises. The key theme of Jesus' public ministry was that he was the Messiah, the Christ, for he declared the kingdom of God is at hand. And so a very natural response from the disciples was, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? The kingdom had been established under David, David had been given the promise that he would always have a son to rule. And Jesus was the son. He was the heir to the throne of David. Therefore it was natural for them to think that now Jesus would establish his kingdom. But they had come to learn that things are not always what you expect with Jesus. They had not expected that he would die. Now that he had died and risen again, and Jesus had explained to them why that was necessary, that he had to take the punishment for the sins of the people. If he was going to forgive the people, he had to do it in a just way, and the only just way was for him to bear the penalty himself, since no man could bear the penalty for his own sin. Jesus doesn't say, this is not going to happen. He says it's not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. In other words, there is a time when the kingdom will be restored to Israel. This is a strong theme of the Old Testament, implicit in the promise to Abraham, to David. The prophecy of Isaiah is very strong. It is the hope of Israel. And so it will happen. But Daniel indicates that God has a plan, he has a program, there are times and seasons, summer and winter, autumn and spring. These things apply in the physical world, but they also apply in the spiritual world. So the Father has a plan. The plan for them involves the testimony that they are to bear to Jesus and to God through the whole world. And this testimony will only be performed through the ministry of God through the Holy Spirit. This is a grand change to the Old Testament scheme where it was the Jewish people who were witnesses. 
They will be witnesses again in the future, but at the present time it is believers in the Lord Jesus, baptised by the Holy Spirit, who will bear that testimony. So he instructs them, stay in Jerusalem. Don't leave Jerusalem until you have received the promise of the Father. Jesus had delivered that promise on the eve of his crucifixion, where he had said that he must go away, for when he goes away, then the Comforter will come, the Holy Spirit, who will bring all things to their remembrance, and who will be their teacher and be their leader. He is the source of power for the Word. We have our own words, and there is a certain power in our words, but the words of God are special words that have special power through the Holy Spirit. And when we deliver the words of God, then they bring life where there is death. So the Holy Spirit would come to establish the church. As Jesus explained, he has been with you, but then he will be in you. And so this is going to be key to understanding the book of Acts, that God's Spirit is working. The word spirit is related to the word wind. It is the power of God. You can't see the wind, but you can see the leaves move. When the wind is really strong, you can see the roofs torn off and the trees thrown over. Incredible things happen with the power of the wind. And so he says to them, you will receive the promise that the Father has given and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The witnesses to me is not just the words that we speak but we are to be witnesses by the manner of our life and how can we live a godly life except that the Holy Spirit helps us to walk in humility and in service, to love others. So the characteristics of the Holy Spirit will become evident among the believers. You shall love one another as I have loved you. The plan of the ministry of of the Holy Spirit is that the message of God shall go far beyond Israel. For it's not enough for Jesus to be king of the Jews. As Isaiah 49.6 says, He shall be ruler of the whole earth. He shall be ruler of the nations. And so you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, which is where they are and where the message will start. But it will spread to all Judea. And having gone through Judea, it will spread beyond Jewish territory into Samaria. But it will keep going to the end of the earth when we look back over nearly 2,000 years of history since the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we see that the message of Jesus is still extending around the world. There is still half the world's population who do not know the name, who have not had the opportunity to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are still languages that are spoken that do not have the word of God in them. But the work is going on apace as God is still raising up witnesses to him in every tribe and people and tongue and nation, so that the message of Jesus is extended to the whole earth. But at some point in time, this phase of of the work will be over. The harvest will be brought in, and the Lord will establish, will restore the kingdom to Israel. And Jesus and the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ. His throne will be established in Jerusalem. The nations will come up to Jerusalem to learn the ways of the Lord and to walk in his ways. Then the Prince of Peace will reign in peace over the whole earth. This is the plan that God has. Luke is going to tell us the begin how within 30 years the gospel would extend from a dozen believers in Jerusalem to reach throughout all the Roman Empire. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. The earth.